So the large crotch was right here across the fence down to this piece here and we drug it up to here. So I got enough clearance to work right here. Barely enough clearance between this log and that log. Enough in the front and plenty right here. It was quite difficult to move it. I think that took an hour and a half, two hours or something probably to figure it out. Really needed some sort of a um, portable winch running on a battery. It would have made that a lot easier and quicker. My uh, come along is underrated for this amount of weight. Most of it was due to just really hung up on the fence. I forgot to bring something. I could have just cut the fence and it would have come through easier. But it's in place, so I'm going to start getting the top level and then start slabbing. I'm on the final log and I wanted to point something out. Uh, when I took that top cut to make the log flat, I'm using the easy rails again and I did not get them perfectly adjusted and I cut a twist into the log. This corner and that corner are higher than these two corners, so it's got a twist sawn into it. So I've tossed the easy rails back onto it and I just kind of wanted to point that out that if you are using them, that if you get one side adjusted, Get it nice and level, then go adjust the other side. You can throw this side off sometimes. So you need to get one side. What I like to do is get them all kind of rough, hammer the dogs in, and then I come back in and check everything a couple times to make sure. That first cut's really important. Um, so what's going to end up happening is, is I'm going to take a uh, sort of heavy cut here. The bottom side of this slab will be nice and flat. The top will have a twist in it, so when I go to level this out, I'll still have room to kind of cut that twist out of it, but I am going to lose just a little bit of wood. It's not a big deal. I'm going to end up with a lot of logs in my life, so we're talking maybe a, an inch of this board um, of this log wasted. Um, let me see if I can get down low enough. Yeah, you can, you can kind of see it there. That right-hand corner is higher than that left hand, so it's just a little bit of a twist in there, but I'm going to get that out using the easy rails, which are very easy to adjust, you just got to do it right. Last night I made up a new chain for the saw and I assumed I would probably hit metal in this because yesterday I did. It was just a nail but I cut right through it and uh, it barely dulled the chain. And then today I came out with a brand new chain on there since I had it sized right. And I made it about a foot into this and I hit some metal that stopped me dead in my tracks. And it's two nails side by side and I ran right into one of their heads and the shank on the other one. The other nail was right here, so I'm thinking that there was something, you know, nailed up the side of the tree, probably some sort of little ladder for a tree house or something at one point. So who knows, that's probably not the last thing I'm going to hit. I'm just going to go to the other side of the log and saw in and stop about right where I hit those nails and then reach up in there with my smaller saw and kind of separate the log and break this thing free and uh, hope we don't hit too much else. But the slabs are worth far more than the cost of uh, sharpening the chain or just replacing the chain. So. I'll carry on.
Well, that worked pretty good. Uh, the chain is still pretty messed up from that original cut. I had to uh, sharpen it twice, but there's the nail right there. It's black right there. So all that tension on the wedges, once I got close enough with my sm small saw, just popped the wood. But as we come down here, there's another piece of metal right there. I bet there's just nails. There's another one. Just saw that. This is probably, that actually looks like a bullet. Yeah, that's the back side of a bullet. So that's just a piece of lead. All the lead, that doesn't matter. Hopefully that is too. I can poke at those, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out for that. I'm using one of these, nail puller. Well, ladies, it took about two hours messing up a chain, a bunch of screwing around. We got it dead flat. Now let's see how far I get before I hit another nail. It's the last day of milling and all I've got is this final slab to take. I came in first on this side due to clearance issues with the ground since the bar sticks out so far. And about right here I hit uh, several nails at once. Then I tried to do a crude sharpening job really quick because it was towards the end of the day. And I came to this end and I was going to cut down two of those nails. And I got about right here and the blade was just too dull to continue cutting and it was just too hard on the bar. I actually did a little bar wear from how much pressure I was putting on there, so that's not good, so I don't want to continue doing anything like that. So I left, got the chain sharpened up uh, pretty good. This chain's still not perfect, but I don't want to put a perfect chain through this log. You can see all this dark stuff here. That's staining from, from metal, so I'm probably going to hit something along the way. I'm just hoping it's something 
that I breeze through and it doesn't just stop me dead in my tracks. Once I get close to this side down here, I'll reach up in there with my smaller saw and just kind of nip the wood away from around those nails and that slab will pop free. And then I can start carrying some of this stuff out. Got these slabs here, got this one over here, um, some of these pieces, another uh, a couple pieces here. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to cut all these pieces up into manageable pieces that branch in the yard just to where they can kind of easily clean up. And then I'm also going to work on this stump here. I'm going to cut all the roots away and then I'm going to take my smaller saw and I'm going to section that root ball and stump up into smaller pieces and I'm going to take those with me as well. It may do some turning projects. Uh, that, that's the kind of wood that could be used to make some gun stock uh, material potentially. It's got a lot of neat coloring in it. Um, you can see right there. A little hard to see all this stuff in person, but you know it's a lot of orangey stuff going on. It's probably some mineral, uh, you know, coloration happening. The center's rotten out, but a lot around the edges is solid. And then I've cut a couple of the roots, and they're solid as well. So I'm just going to sa uh, sample around with that and kind of see what um, what I can do with it. And also by getting rid of this big root, that's a huge problem that I'm getting rid of for them just sort of as a thank you for the wood. Uh, but that's it. Time to get going on this slab and pray that I don't hit anything crazy. Let's take one final look at the yard before I haul out of here. So the tree stood here, fell this way. You can see the fence damaged over to the neighbor's yard. All that's been cut up into firewood sized pieces. Uh, we got about a foot of walnut sawdust over there. Expensive, nice luxury sawdust. Uh, big hole where the root ball was and then I busted all these into smaller uh, sort of manageable pieces. This root ball was just rock hard. It was uh, really hard to cut it. 
Plus I was using kind of a rough chain to make sure I wasn't just tearing up a chain. There's a lot of dirt on the wood. Uh, you hit rocks and stuff like that. It did have to bust out the 090 out of the mill and use that for that extra power um, and the bar length. You can't really tell, but this stuff is super neat looking. Uh, I mean, it's just really swirly. You got a lot of wild colors going on in it. So I'm going to try to come up with something neat to do with this stuff. I'd like to maybe, uh, on my bandsaw, um, cut it into thin pieces, make some veneers, maybe make some uh, panels for some doors, some jewelry boxes. It probably end up being all small projects since these are smaller chunks. I had to bust it down pretty small. Um, I'm not a wood, big wood turner other than turning table legs, so most of this will be turned into uh, something other than wood turning. Um, some of it may end up being turned if I give some to a wood turner, but not big into that myself as far as bowl turning goes. Don't have the right kind of a lathe. But this is pretty much it. Just wanted to show you what it looks like.